After watching the most recent show on Jeffrey Dahmer on Netflix, it led me to wonder about the other tellings of the events that occurred. One of the most recent depictions of the evil individual occurred in 2017. After watching it, I thought I'd compare the two depictions, see which version is truer to the real events, and also see which one serves its purpose best. So let's get into it. Here is the Jeffrey Dahmer story versus my friend Dahmer. Just to let you know, this video will contain spoilers on the TV show and movie. Upon the first watch of both the film and the TV show, it was clear to see that they both focused on two completely different aspects of Jeffrey Dahmer's life. The most recent Netflix show focused on most of the life of Dahmer, from his childhood where his obsession began, all the way throughout the killings that occurred, the trial, right up to him being caught, jailed, and killed. Whereas the 2017 movie focused on a slightly more specific time frame in Dahmer's life, and it was mainly around the time of 1978 in his senior year at school, right up until the moment that he met his first victim, which was Stephen Hicks. So both the movie and the TV show serve different purposes. One is on Dharma's slow descent into darkness, and the other is his entire life. I'll break this video down into a few different subsections. The Portrayals of Dharma in both the show and the movie, I feel we got two very different portrayals of Dharma. This is because of where he was at in his life in the movie, and also because in the show we saw the changing of the individual on screen. Ross Lynch played Dharma in the movie, and I would say that his portrayal of Jeffrey was very well done. Lynch didn't need to portray a threatening version of Dharma, like we saw in the Netflix show. The only time we saw that type of emotion and mood in the movie was when we saw him look as though he was going to kill his friend Duff in the closing few moments which I do feel he played well when it came to adopting that dark persona for the small moment. However, this version of Jeff that we were watching was one that was slightly more awkward, lonely, and didn't know quite how to fit in. He was lost and didn't really have a place for himself. We saw the intrigue that Dharma had in the dissecting of roadkill and animals, and him gradually adopting a darker mindset where killing became ever so present. He played a convincing version of the evil individual at the end, and you saw the slow progression into darkness as the movie unfolded. The voice, tone, and inflections were very similar to Evans, however I'd say it wasn't as fully developed. Evans' portrayal of Jeffrey Dahmer was one that contained a lot more growth, development, and different layers. We got to see the version that was slightly more awkward in high school, along with the descent into darkness, but also the haunting version of Dharma where his fantasies became a reality, and also all that he did as it was depicted on screen. The fact that he was playing him over the course of 10 hours instead of a condensed 1 hour and 45 minute version was something that did lend to his favour. Evan's portrayal felt real, rather than a delivery, and it was chilling and haunting to watch. The emotional confliction that he held along with the anger, loneliness, and evil nature that had to be portrayed can't be beaten by any other here. Accuracy and similarities The movie My Friend Dharma is based off of the high school friend of Dharma, Duff, and his encounters with Dharma, who we saw being played in the movie. In the 2000s, he released a graphic novel with the same title of the movie, where he put to paper what it was like being around Dharma and being a somewhat friend to him despite the fact that it wasn't a friendship that felt the most genuine. Most of what we saw at the time that the movie was set, we saw occurring in the TV show, such as Dharma's interest in roadkill, his mother abandoning him, him getting in all of the photos of the yearbook with his face then being covered with a black marker, him doing a Dharma in the sense that he would make noises and carry out disruptive behavior in order to make his peers laugh, along with also awaiting the runner to run by him whilst he had a bat so he'd be able to take him out if he were to encounter him along with the sad truth of Dharma picking up Stephen Hicks on the side of the road. The movie made out like he'd just left a concert and that the party was going to continue back at Dharma's following his invite, when in reality it was the opposite. Hicks was on his way to a concert to meet his friends, so that was something that was changed slightly. Something that occurred in the movie that did also happen in real life was when Dharma and his classmates were in DC and they met the vice president. This was something that did actually occur, but it was an exaggeration of the truth slightly. They met the vice president, but it wasn't a direct meeting. They only caught a glimpse of him from a distance, unlike what we saw in the movie. The TV show contained most of what was in the movie, as it incorporated that part of Jeffrey Dahmer's life, along with everything else. However, there wasn't a real focus on Dahmer's friendship with Durf. Jeffrey was presented as more of a lone individual who didn't have any close friends. The show mainly stuck by the truths that happened, however there was one thing at the centre of the show that wasn't true in reality, and that was of Glenda being his direct neighbour. 
She lived nearby, but she didn't live next door to him in the same apartment block. She did call the police several times in order to get them to check on Dharma, but she didn't live next door to him. It feels as though Glinda was made more of a main focus in the show and moved next door so the weight of her calling the police could have more of an impact in terms of the way that it was presented. There wasn't really anything in the movie that was left out of the show other than the focus on Durf and their trip to DC. The overall review. I feel as though there is definitely a place for both this TV show and movie. As I mentioned before, they both provide two different things. The Jeffrey Dahmer story on Netflix showed us the entirety of Dahmer's life. We saw events occurring from the victim's perspective, the families of the victim's perspective, and also Dahmer's family's perspective. So as a fly on the wall, we saw a lot of different things unfolding and how it impacted everybody that was mildly and heavily associated. Whereas I would say that the movie focused on a small window, but a poignant one, in the sense that it was the final few months before he committed his first murder, showing the dark state of his mind and the obsession that he had with the inside of individuals, creatures, and roadkill. The darkness that we saw in the final couple of minutes between Dharma and Durf, along with the scene where he was fantasizing about laying on a bed with a body, was the darkest that it went. And that was only an ounce of the spine-tingling weight and horror that came in the Netflix series. The pacing of the movie can be difficult to keep up with at times, because there are cuts that occur where days pass and it feels a little unnatural. But that's what having a shorter runtime comes with. They're both chilling watches, but for me, I'd have to say that the Netflix series is the one that I'd recommend most. It's one of the darkest depictions of an individual that I've seen. Evan Peters, along with the score, soundtrack, portrayals, and focus on other people made this feel real, which it was, but it didn't feel like a piece of television. The movie serves its purpose well, but the show takes this haunting reality and tells it in a way like no other. So, there you have it. The Jeffrey Dahmer Story vs. My Friend Dharma. If you want to see more videos such as Endings Explained, Theories and Predictions, and Character Breakdowns, then click on the i button. Or alternatively, you can head over to my channel where you'll find them all. If you'd like to give me a show or movie that you'd like me to review, then head over to my Twitter, at BrainPilot underscore, and tweet me what show or movie you'd like me to review next. And finally, if you'd like to see what I rate the latest movies that don't quite make the cut to getting a dedicated video, then head over to my Letterboxd profile. It's where I rate the latest releases in real time. Did you make it to the end of the Netflix show? Leave a comment down below, and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.